I in California, pick a spot. Okay. So, uh, so we're normally not close to it, but this last fire and the, Mo the Motiva fire was pretty close with air quality was horrible. And my wife works in Pasadena. So I'm, I'm watching airplanes drop water. So we was that close. Wow. Okay. I'm so glad that you were safe, Mark. And it is just so good to see the fellas back again. Joe, it's been a little bit. Joe called uh, himself going on vacation, y'all. How y'all doing? Sorry, I'm Cowboys <laughs> going on too, man. How y'all doing today, man? Watch it. My heart, my heart hurting right now. Just... <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. You know one serious. How y'all doing, man? This is crazy. Yeah, you know, one Mark, thing, you know, it's yeah. always good to see you. Welcome back, Charles. Welcome. I have no idea who you're repping for tonight, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little question. I don't, know, either, man. I don't know, I don't know, man. I know it's a big game on tonight, man. So <laughs> I think I might have to go for them heat, man. You might have to go for the heat, Junior. <laughs> welcome back. It's great to see you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Definitely was a pleasure seeing you guys again. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Chris could not be with us last minute, everyone. So just send up a prayer for Chris. Um, we are back again with another amazing session. And that's what he said. This gentleman's forum is built in mind with the fellas. We want to know their thoughts. We want to get some answers. And what's so great about tonight's session is we've invited the audience because we have probably the dopest audience. They are very much a part of what we do and our conversations that we have. And um, they are actually gonna be the ones to jump on and ask the questions tonight. So I get to kind of sit back and just kind of help everyone um, navigate this thing. But I'm curious to know what is on the hearts and on the minds of our people. So um, we are going to utilize the chat for sure. Um, so we may have some people that may not want to join the panel. Maybe they want to ask their question in the chat and that's fine. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get this started because I think we have somebody in the waiting room already. Fellas, are you guys ready? We are ready. No, definitely. No? <laughs> 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 All right, let me see where they are. All right, she's actually calling in now. So we will wait for, I think it's Claudia that's coming in first. Joe, um, any names we see in the chat? You're muted. Oh. No, not as yet, not okay. as yet. I actually see um, Latricia is in the waiting room. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring on Latricia. Oh, let's no, not as yet, not as okay. yet. I actually see um, Latricia. If you are on, if you are watching via phone, go ahead and um, mute it or turn that volume down for me, please. And Latricia, I see you joined us. I'll let you get synced up in just a moment. Go ahead and you can unmute and add your camera. Latricia, you there? Just a minute. Can you hear me? Um, we can now. Yeah. Did you want to turn on your 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 camera? Sure. There you go. Can you see me good? Yeah. Hey. Oh, am I gonna be the first up? You are the first up, fellas. You gonna give Latricia a warm welcome? I know y'all ready for the game and all, but. <laughs> Trisha, no, Trisha, we was waiting for you all day. So we are ready for whatever's on your heart. How and you mind. doing, Trisha? How you doing? Hi, good to see y'all again. <laughs> all right, Latricia, I'm ready for your question. Or okay. they're ready for your question. Okay. 
So we'll just kick it off with this question I had. Um, and this is kind of like a personal question because it does have something to do with that has happened to me um, recently and a number of times. But I want to know, um, why do men leave a marriage or a relationship and actually get into another relationship or marriage, but then try to double back to the partner that they left and either make them the side chick or ask, um, is there a chance that we're gonna get back together? But they ask that question without leaving their new partner. <laughs> Got it. That, that's crazy. Um, I won't say that's all men, right? That's, that's certain men. And I feel like um, that guy, that person that does that is really um, searching for something. That that person didn't have the full package at that moment. And he, he's not the type to actually voice his, probably voice his opinion, voice his concerns. Let him know what he's looking for, what he wants to actually have um, in a woman. So he tried to search out for another one, but then realized that's green and 100% on the other side and say, you know what, let me try to see if I get the 80, 20, make my 100. That's, that's what I'm thinking that guy is going through. Um, for, you, for anybody that's dealing with something like that, I would say, you know, we got to know who you are, the work and know what you want. Because if that's, if you don't want to be that side piece, side chick, whatever the case, or be in that mix, you got to cut through, cut it loose. For that guy that's going through that, you got to understand really voice, hundred percent. No one's going to be hundred percent what you want. That's that's for a given. Um, you have to be comfortable and love yourself first, and then find the other person that help you out. Probably 30 percent, but you're not looking for hundred percent. You give your fifty, the other person give fifty, you make a hundred. So for, I hope that answered that question. Is that um, that that person's lost really They're looking for something, and know that you may have some good qualities that the other person doesn't doesn't have and doesn't exhibit. He wants to go and have both of you guys, you know, eat his cake and his ribs at the same time. Oh, he said cake and ribs. Okay, Junior. Um, Charles, anything you want to add? Well, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to start by saying I do agree with Junior. Um, it's not every man, you know, that fits into that description. But for the men that do fit into that box, I definitely will say um, there are men out here that are hunters, right? So they actually want to try to hunt their prey. They want to capture their prey. Um, and like Junior said, they also want their cake and eat it too. So there are some greedy men out there that just want their cake and eat it too. Especially when you have someone that you've been with before, you guys have had an emotional connection, physical connection, you know, they feel like that ties them in, especially, you know, if they were, you know, a uh, child involved or anything like that. You've heard this, you've heard it before. Men will tell you like, you know, anytime, you know, you have a baby with a woman, you can always go back to that same woman. I mean, that's the mentality and the thought process of some men out here. You know what I mean? So if you feel like he's had you before, he feel like he can always have you. So it's, and you got to also remember that there are some women that will allow it. So even if a man wants to, you know, dibble and dab back into a past situation, it's up to the woman to refuse it, right? To de decline it. But there are some women that are also allow them to play that position to play that part. So if they can do it with one, you got to know they're going to always try it again and again and again. You know what I mean? So you got to also just look at the person you are, what kind of values you hold, what are your standards, you know, the respect that you have for yourself as a woman, you know, and just say, yeah, that's something that I'm just not tolerating. That doesn't work for me. So even if he does try to come back into the picture, you shutting it down first quarter. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're muted, Alicia. You're on mute, Alicia. Joe, Mark, is there anything that you want to add to that, or did the fella sum it up? Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree with. Oh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. No, no, yeah, Joe. Um, I definitely agree with uh, what both the fellas said, and I think Holiday hit it on the head. Is if you allow him back, uh, obviously that guy, you know, um, he's not confident with something, or he's he's searching for something that he's. He's not getting, but if you allow him back in, he's going to always feel like he come back in. Um, it's more of a disrespect to you that he'll even double back and even consider you the side chick after you went through so much with him and he was able to leave you for what he thought was something better on the other side, just to double back to you and then make you the side chick. 
I would say that, yeah, and he, it's something that you do, um, that you've been doing to, to make him feel like he come back, but mm. it's, it's something's missing with him. Wow, that's so honest. Mark, you closing us out? Latricia, well, uh, so I'm going to go with what the guys are saying, because I, I, I can't pinpoint this on men, and uh, Alicia threw out some uh, statistics, I think a couple of weeks ago, that like, there are more men that cheat than women. However, these men, men are cheating with women. So I'm going to throw a question back on you, Ms. Mm. Latrice. How, why is it that women, oh, do women know when they're dating a man, when they, oh, uh, let me back it up. Why do women allow men who are, who is in between relationships to allow themselves to get involved with a man in that situation and allow it to, develop into something that they're not sure if this man is going to leave or not. Why do women allow themselves to be in that situation knowing, and they know, you know, I, I know, I think women, people know when the other person is with someone or not, but why do women allow themselves to be put in that situation? Um, well, this is not me right now. Of course not. Have, uh, no, of course no, not. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> I was asking for a friend. Right, right, right. <laughs> in the past, in my younger days, I have been that girl that just was thirsty and wasn't very sure of myself and wanted the um, attention of a man, if you will. So I didn't, it didn't matter that, oh, he might be in a relationship or he is in a relationship. I'll just take it, what I'm getting. But moving forward, um, as I've grown, the, the question was based off of me now because I am divorced um, and my ex-husband, he's remarried. However, he has came back and came with the, say, the mindset that I believe it was um, Junior that said, or maybe if it was Mr. Holiday, I had you before, so you're always mine. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been like, yeah, later for you, that's not happening. But, but I also asked the question because he also like, well, we could just be friends. And I'm like, well, you should have been my friend when we was married. Mm. So it's just, it's just a question that I wonder because I'm like, if you're serious about moving on, then move on. Cause we didn't got a whole divorce. But if you wasn't serious about it, why did you leave, number one? Number two, now that you done left and got you a whole new wife, what the heck do you think I want with you? Why are you coming back to even think that I want something with you? And I, it's just, a, it's a question that I asked him and maybe he's gone on about his business because I haven't heard from him in a little bit, but I can almost guarantee I'll hear from him again. Like when he thinks the dust is settled or, or whatever, and sometimes they smell it. I'm sorry, but sometimes I, I feel like men can smell when you've moved on. And it's like they somehow like magically show up via text, call, DM, I don't know. But it's like, I don't know. They can, I feel like they smell when you've moved on. Well, you know, at least I, I would say this. And I think like, this goes for men and women. Is that, you know, you know, you know how to shut a person down. You know what I'm saying? If he came, like, say, for instance, uh, Latrice, if I'm your husband, I come back to you and I throw a word to you, you know there's probably five words you can say to me, let me know that this is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but but you like, like you just saying, Alicia, you know, I think men and women can smell the blood in the water when you be like, well, I mean, we can be friends, but don't be calling me. You know, right there, yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm in there. I got yeah. it. But when you shut it down, like, I mean, say some words that really let him know. Believe me, a man or woman turn and walk away like, let me nev never try that again. That's good stuff. All right. Yeah, but just to answer your question, I have been that thirsty chick that didn't care what was going on. I just needed what I needed. And um, however I was going to get it, I was going to get it. But you grow out of that. I think it's some a, a young mindset. It will even an old, because there's a lot of older women that think like that. But I mean, I've gotten myself esteem up. And so that's not how I think anymore. But I think that's what it is. Yeah. Great point. Did the fellas answer your question? Y'all did. So okay. I'm in the kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. <laughs>
Know, know your worth, Queen. Know your worth. Yeah, don't pick up the phone. Know your worth. Your there you go. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna change the number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha, thank you so much for coming on. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. We got four people waiting in the chat. So let's see who we're gonna throw on again. Let's see. I'm gonna jump to. Hey, that's a familiar name. Let's see. Go ahead and join. It's my sister. What do you know? Uh, oh, it's the young. Twin. It's the young sister. Watch it, okay? Your twin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think she's syncing her audio. Hey, Max. Hey, sis. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You look great. You're Thank doing well. you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the panel. Um, some faces that you may not be familiar with will be Jomo. He was on vacation um, when you were on. So um, that's, that's Jomo. And then you remember Junior. And I think you may have met Charles and then Mark. Hello guys, how are you? How you doing? How you, how you doing? doing? Good to see you. Good. Good to see you again, Maxine. How you doing? Good to see you too. So I have, Hi. um, I'm sorry, Alicia, did I No, go ahead. Yeah, we're ready for your question. So I have like two questions, right? Um, one of them is a little bit more serious than the other one, but so in this new, you know, let me ask the easy one first. Um, how do you know she's the one? If there are any of you that are married on here or have, you know, a very significant other, what is it? How do you know that she is the one? Uh, well, I could take that. I, I, I've been married now over five years. And um, I would say you just you just know. It's something that you would just know. It's like, um, for me, the way I find out she was the one is that I constantly, constantly think, thought about her. And and when I say think about it, not popped up anywhere. It's like when I actually go out, do something, I'm saying, hey, this would be good for us. You know what? If I see a dress on another woman, like, man, that would look good on her. So me putting her in my thoughts about other things and, and assigning those roles to her, like, hey, you know what? If I do this, would it be good for us? So considering her feelings and everything like that, remind me, like, you know what? She is the one for me because I really want to take the next step and actually have a life with this woman because she is a life giver. She is, she, every time we were together, we was, we were having fun in terms of growing and actually building things together. And I couldn't see myself without her. So uh, it's a hard question to answer really, because everyone has a different way to, um, when you know, when you know, you know, you just, you just have the feeling like, hey, I, I want to be with this person forever. Like, forget it. And this is coming from a guy, this is my second marriage. so. I can tell you that, um, and this is the longest I would say I, I was I was married from the first one. So this one I I felt it way different from the first. So you could say that. So you just you just know, and I guess maturity at this point too. So I can say that too. So uh, th Maxine, that's a hard question to ask, uh, answer. So uh, really, is this when you really consider? For me, consider everything, every input, and um, consider her feelings. Um, arguments in there want to sit there and finalize arguments and not go to bed are upset because that's something I don't like to do um and really consider everything you do and add her and have conversations real conversations not just you know hey what's up how you doing uh, but really say hey what are you thinking about doing what are your plans and involving those type of stuff you just know that's that's the one you want to be with you know, thank you for that, Junior. It's interesting that you say would say that that's a hard question because I, I struggled with even asking it because it seems so elementary. Um, but oftentimes you see men who like they look like they would be like the forever playboy or you'd never expect them to marry. And you're like, oh, oh wait, scrolling through Facebook. Matter of fact, two weeks ago, I was like, really? He got married? Like, I really, like, who? It's almost like you want to say, like, who snagged him or how did she do it or what was that secret sauce kind of thing so so thank yes. you for that you're absolutely right because uh, really just awesome. to answer a little bit to that i never was going to remarry and she knew that and coming together we already knew us and 
look at me married five plus years now. So it is a hard thing. It just happens. Uh, you just know, really. Well, congratulations. And thank oh, you. thank you. I'm going to throw it to Mark next to answer, but I'm curious, is it true that men know like fairly early too? Like, you know, like within like the first 30 to 60 days? That's what I heard. Um, I, no, I think everybody knows differently. Um, yeah. so I don't know about that early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, go ahead. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to throw a little, um, uh, what's the age there? Uh, philosophy on this. So um, in my second marriage, uh, first marriage lasted uh, about 15 plus years. So how do you know she's the one? My experience, you don't know. She's the one for this moment right now. Hmm. So because if you all don't, because I think about it, there's all, how many, what, it's almost 50% divorce rate. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I've been to marriages where the people uh, when they met on the day of the wedding is like, oh, I'm gonna be with you forever. I love you so much. Oh, I could just eat you up. <laughs> Something happens in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And this way, Adrian, I'm, I'm understanding Adrian Flocker, you all don't grow together. Yeah, you were at, at 18, you were my my you were my boo, you were my everything. Mm -hmm. But by the time we get to 24, 25, 26, bills start coming. Uh Children, uh, situations happen where now that real person is starting to show. And it's like, you know what? I can't stand you. Well, what happened? Because in the beginning, I was the one. You know, we, we couldn't sleep without each other. So I think if you, you depend on what it is you like, because I know uh, with me back in my younger days, uh, depending on what you was wearing, you was the one. Like, oh, yeah, she's definitely the one. Oh, no, she the one. Uh, maybe she the one. So, so true. Uh, but... But after you learn to, but if you don't grow together and really know that after a while, that physicality may not be, it's not going to be what it was at 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. You got to learn to love that person for more than for the physical part. So to me, I, I can't say that I knew she was the one. I thought she was the one, but now I'm only in my second one. And I hope it's the one, right? But mm -hmm. now I have some experience to make it work. And to make that, knowing that the physicality is going to die down, but now we got to achieve something higher than that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make you the one. Not that I thought you were the one, but I'm going to make you the one. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Thank I you. Really like this. We have an aunt who, when I'm, I'm divorced also, and um, before I had gotten married to my high school sweetheart, my aunt had once told me, and to Annie, had once told me the very thing that you love about the person right now can be the very thing that drives you crazy later. And like for me, um, I just love the fact that he was just so caring and where are you going? Oh, where's swimsuit? I don't want these other guys to see you, blah, blah. Well, it turned out on the back end after 10 years to be control. And so, you know, sometimes we interpret something up front, like you said, you're the, you're it for right now. You know, but as we grow and we learn and mature, you know, we, we kind of start to see things and understand things differently. So thanks for that, Mark. Mm, yeah, that was really good. Mm -hmm. Joe, holiday, anything you want to? Um, it's, 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 it is a tough question because like fella said, you know, you definitely don't, you know, that's a hard thing to ask. But you know that they're special. I'll say instead of saying that the one is if you're willing to take those risks that we all mentioned. And the risk, the risk of just making sure that, you know, you go, like Junior said, you know, you, you think about them all the time, you're willing to give your heart over to them, you know, they do things that you, you normally don't really pay attention to, but now you're paying attention to and you say, hey, I'm going to take this risk because you, you don't know the outcome of anything, but if you take that risk with someone, you know, they're very special. So for me, I mean, I don't know if my the one radar might be off, but um, I definitely have been in uh, different situations and different relationships where I felt like every one of them did something to make them the one, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it didn't last, right? So, I mean, if there is such a thing, right? For me, I just look for gestures, right? Actions speak louder. It's nothing that you can say to me that's gonna make me feel like, wow, she just said that and I feel like she's the one for me. No, it's gestures, it's actions, it's things that we do together that can make me feel like, okay, I can see myself 
long term in this situation or I can see myself committing myself to this person you know what I mean um and like I said I've experienced it in different situations but unfortunately you know those didn't work out hopefully the situation I'm in now does but at the end of the day um it's a day-to-day like Mark says you know let's continue learning each other trying to grow with each other and, and see if this can be that for everything all right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, um, so much for that being the easy question. Um, so now, <laughs> that was an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? um, Actually, you got sweating over here. Good. I'm sorry. It's not your lighting. You don't have that halo light, you know. Um, so my my other question is this. So 2020 has brought us this whole new climate, right? We are seeing um, an increase in feminism, increasing in um, agendas that emasculate men or uh, diminish your, um, your shine as, um, especially with, with heterosexual men, I'll just be frank. Um, how can we support you? Mm, excellent question, Maxine. Mr. Holiday. <laughs> uh, real simple for me, just be our peace. It's peace of mind. <laughs> like you said, with everything that's going on this year, 10 years from now, you know, we definitely been holding a lot of weight, right? We hold a lot on our shoulders. We try to step up and be those providers. We try to be the leaders. We try to be the kings in our nation. So that means we're always under attack from all different angles. One thing that does not help the situation is being coming home into your place of peace and not having peace from your significant other, from your partner, from that person who is supposed to, who is supposed to provide that to you. That is it just, it's not conducive to anything positive. You know what I mean? So for me, if there's anything that you really ask is how can I really be that peace for him? Like, what can I do to really bring that peace? You know, and, and that's a conversation that you guys would have to have because everyone is going to have a different perspective on it, right? But for me, it's just peace, peace of mind. Because I go, through, we go through too much as it is. So it's just peace when I come home. That's good, thank you. Nice holiday, Joe. I say take it back to the old school. Don't 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 do what social media suggests. Don't do what your friend is telling you to do. Don't don't do what your coworkers are telling you to do. Do what you know, like Holiday said, bring some peace. You know, you guys built the bond, you know, and when you let people inside of it, that's that's when you start getting that split. So continue doing what you what you knew know to be is peace. Like you know, it's Sunday, it's football. Make sure you know, hey, you know, you're not arguing with him. Hey, maybe you go to the store, get his snacks. You know, little things, you know, guys take that, you know, to the extreme, you know, we may not smile in your face, but to our friends, like, hey, man, you know, she just went to the store, you know, she bought me some snacks, you know, and it's like, and those little you things. You tell your friends, Joe, you, you huh? tell your friends, you tell your friends. Nah, I'm not. I, I mean, don't talk about some, that, man. Some, some, <laughs> some stuff, some stuff, but no, the small things, and, 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 and I think what happens a lot of time is we, we let people into our, into our, into our, our, our atmosphere, into our circle. And then you start doing what Brenda may have suggested or doing what your coworker Alex may have suggested instead of just doing what got y'all to that point. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get old. Trust me. It doesn't get old. Continue doing. There's a reason why you fell in love. Just do it. Modify it. Do it more and more and more and more. Don't switch up. Mm-hmm. Okay, Joe. Let me jump to Junior and then I'll have Mark close this out. Oh man, um, I think Holiday and Joe hit it real, real hard on the head. Really, um, really, I, I would say this: a mix of everything, really, because you got to think about it. Um, like you mentioned, if we get intact, if, if you look, and I see this all the time, there's no positive images of a black guy in any shows and any um, commercials. You really see is non-existent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the best way to stay in our corner is to stay in our corner and be that 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 rock right there, so supporting the um sharpen our arguments make it think a different way to so make sure our ideas are working to give us that um that be our cheerleader be our everything really it, like somebody said you said be the freak in the bed the lady in the streets all that you want to be our our foundation as we actually build this um home on top at the same time so it's a little mixture of everything man but like i said holiday and joe hit it right in the head you know peace of mind peace of frame gestures positivity just all poor, just poor, continue pouring positivity, big time. Um, especially for us black men. I mean, like <laughs> we go through a lot, and we get it portrayed terribly. So the best thing to do is continue supporting us. 
right. Uh, so, how do you uh, accomplish that? So, you know, everybody's saying, uh, you know, make the environment peaceful. My philosophy on that magazine always has been, it's 50-50. If I haven't made the environment peaceful for you to thrive in, how do I expect for you to bring peace to me? So here I am, here we both coming home from work, and you had a frustrating day with your boss, and I had one with my boss. So where are you going to get a peace to give me? Now, I think we put a lot of pressure on our women of color, our black women, to just think that you all are supposed to shrug all this stuff off when you get home, whatever mental, emotional state you went through, be ready for me because I had a harder day than you. I have no, that, that, you know, that's, that's, that's just uh, setting yourself up for failure. So how do you support me is that I support you. And I have to give you the strength and the, and the, and the want to, to say, damn, I want to get home and cook him dinner because I've done, because I've made you so at peace and made you so uh, knowing that you are so worth it that you're going to you're going to have nothing but peace to give back to me. So me expecting you always, you know, a woman always to bring peace and a woman always to make peace or make the house. I, you know, I, I like to say I've been married once and I tell my wife now you ought to be sending the first wife a thank you letter because the man you got today is because of the experience I went through with her. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the growth and the learning I did with her. So, no, I, I don't, I, I look for, I, I, so how could you help us? By making sure I'm making you happy. So if I'm making you happy, I know you're going to take care of me. That's so, amazing. yeah, that, that, yeah that's, that's a two-way street. And if it's a one-way street, that's one-way communication. It's not going to work. Mark for president, everybody. Listen, Mark <laughs> got the <laughs> chat blowing up. <laughs> I've been reading the book. I've been reading. Hey, you've been reading the book. Read the book, y'all. Read the book. Read the book. I'm sorry, but that's just something I've always, you know, because that's just something that people always throw out. I mean, I mean, I'm even coming up. You just always hear, uh, "Your woman ought to be taken care of. Your woman ought to be taking care of you." And, and yes, I believe that. But I'm like, well, damn, what? A, how am I gonna? How are you gonna take care of me if you frustrated? Yeah. You know. So yeah. So anyway, there. That's 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 my understanding now. Maxine, what do you think? Um, if I had a sign that had the 10 on it, I would give that to each of you because you guys are, are bringing some really great insight. I, um, you know, as someone who used to play basketball in, in high school and college, I was like that girl that the guys would let in. Um, and so I'd hear some of that locker room talk, maybe not to the extreme, but I did have some insight. And I'm watching Alicia have that insight with you all. And we can't appreciate or show enough appreciation to you guys for um, giving us this insight because sometimes, you know, it, it's, we always telling you what we want. I need this in a man. I need that in a man. But it's kind of like, you know, let's hear from the men what they need from us. You know, let's, let's hear how to have that balance, Mark, President Mark, as you said, you know, how do we really, you know, posture ourselves so that we're both there for one another and have healthy, loving relationships. So thank you all. Thanks, and great job, Alicia. Congratulations on 10. Oh. 10 episodes. Oh, that's right. That's right. Nice. Great that's job, fun. guys. Really rich insight. And for everyone, the chat is really just appreciating you guys' answer to that. It looks like, Maxine, that was a popular question that folks wanted to know. So thank you for having the courage to come on here and ask that. And of course, fellas, we we... We in the middle of this, so I know you guys are already warmed up and ready to go. Maxime, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you. you. Good to see you again, Maxime. Of course. Nice you too. You guys take care. Bye. All right, take care. <laughs> All right, so we have next up coming to the stage, Miss Claudia Clark. Well, Who's that? Not Slim. Her whole government, but Slim. you know. Hi. <laughs> There she is, Claudia. How are you? We're good. How are you? I'm good. I am currently driving, but I'm good. Okay. We don't want to hear that, Claudia. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear that. All right, my bad. All right. All right. So, what All question right. you got for us? So, my question is. Would you 
compromise your happiness for the success of your relationship. Mm. Mark, Wait, I'm X gonna... that again. X that again, Claudia. My question is, would you compromise your happiness for the success of your relationship? So how how are you going to be so if I already know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm trying to put it together because if my relationship isn't happy, I'm not, how am I happy? So you're asking how would I compromise my happiness? Is my happiness built on like my job or my income or your my status? No, your happiness could be things that you enjoy doing that you may have to compromise for your relationship. Yeah, your, so your happiness could be a lot of different things. So this again, this goes back to when you when you get married, you're giving up of yourself. And all and that one philosophy I always believe if in a marriage, if I give up everything that I'm doing for the happiness of her, and she give up everything she's doing for the happiness of me. We're arguing about, no, you go ahead, enjoy yourself, baby. No, really, you go enjoy yourself. And I'll give you an example. I, I love basketball. I was about to ask Maxine about what position she played in, but I'm going to leave that alone. I love basketball. In my head, I play way better than I actually do, right? So when I first got married, I played basketball probably four times out of the week before I got married, first, uh, first marriage. And I did that for probably the first three years of my marriage. And it was like, no, this, you can't continue this. This ain't going to go on. So as happy as I was got on that court and played, I had to give that up for the, for the success of my relationship. But my relationship was, that was what I was trying to make happy. You understand? So my happiness wasn't basketball. I enjoyed that. But my goal was to make my relationship happy or make it successful. So whatever I got to give up for the happiness or the uh, for my relationship to work, to me Thank that's you, yeah that that's all side orders. But the main focus now is my relationship and my family. So if you're trying to hold on to this while trying to work on this, you can't serve two gods. Claudia, we lost you. Claudia hit somebody. Oh, oh no! Got an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, you better not have got an accent. We are going to be so mad with you. I hope you're all right. No, no, I'm here. I don't know oh, why okay. you say my video went away, but I'm here. I'm okay, here. you you scared. Woo! But, uh, but yeah, so I don't know if that makes any sense, Claudia, but yeah, you, so you, yeah, if you're concentrating on your relationship, there shouldn't be nothing else that you're trying to hold on to to make you happy, because now you're trying, you're, you're trying to serve two gods. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Junior, I see it on the tip of your tongue. What you got? Well, well, no, because um, that, that question, I mean, literally, the, when I first heard it, I said no. Um, but the thing is, you got to think about what's, what are you happy about? What are you happy right now that you need to give up? For example, um, if I'm happy, I'm chilling while my single friends, and then I'm going to go ahead talking crap, and it's chilling at the bars with all these single people, and that's my happiness, then in my head, I, I shouldn't be in a relationship because I like chilling with single people, right? But then you also, there's an other spectrum where you shouldn't give your happiness. Because I'm always, I'm always say this, and I'm a, um, um, I'm a believer in it. You got to be happy for, your, you got to be happy. You got to be truly happy yourself before you can give anybody else any happiness. So for me to sacrifice my happiness for the sake of a relationship is really killing myself in order to be in a relationship. And I wouldn't say to do that at all. You can't kill yourself. You can't change who you are. Because you guys are two individual people meeting together. So there's things you're going to compromise, right? Now, of course, you know, I can't play basketball four days out of the week, but I'm going to play three days out of the week. You no, know, I'm still doing something that I, I like to do, right? But yeah, I'm going to compromise with you because I do like to spend some time with you. So of course, I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to take away my whole entire happiness. Like, hey, babe, I don't want you to play basketball at all then I'm sorry, that's a non-negotiable because that's my therapy. That's my peace of mind because that what keeps me happy. In order for me to be happy, in order for you to be happy, I need to be happy because at the end of the day, I can't make anybody happy if I'm not happy myself. So that, that answer will always say no to me. And she shouldn't want to take away that from you because she knows that that's your outlet. Um, yeah, you're absolutely now, right. as far as the quantity, right. maybe, that's but a you shouldn't you shouldn't need to eliminate someone else's outlet 
depending on the outlet. Let me make that disclaimer. Yeah. Um, depending on the outlet. But Claudia, I'm curious if you feel comfortable sharing um, what is the compromise? The compromise could be anything. Like, like, um, like, I like traveling. Would I give up? What if I'm with somebody or in a relationship with somebody that doesn't like traveling? For whatever. Okay. Would I give up yeah. traveling? So yeah, an example. In my opinion, yeah, in my opinion, I don't think you should give up traveling because that person doesn't like it. Now, can you come to a medium where maybe you travel with your girlfriends a trip and then you travel with him on a trip or you travel by yourself so that you still get your outlet? Um, because that could be how you refuel. That could be how you reset. Um, and we all need that. So... Let me take it back to the fellas. So I'll jump to Joe and then Charles, you'll close this out. All right. Um, I think the biggest thing is compromise. If there if there's no compromise, then no, I'm not I'm not sacrificing my happiness for the relationship. Now, if there's compromise that comes, like they said, you know, if you're willing to take, okay, let me cut it down to two days out of the week instead of four, then you know what? I'm gonna compromise something to make sure that this relationship goes. But if it's like Hey, babe, let's go on a vacation. And he said no all the time instead of one time opening up and saying, you know what? Yeah, let me go on a vacation. Let me let me jump into your world and see how your world is, because maybe I might like it. If they're not willing to do that, no, I won't sacrifice my happiness. So you'll say you'll say, all right, we we over. I'll say, I wouldn't see no I wouldn't really see nothing in it because I'm I'm, I'm miserable. I'm frustrated because you're not willing to do anything I want to do because I'm pretty sure you're sacrificing things that you don't like about him to make sure you're doing it just because you you want to make sure you show him like, hey, you know, I'm willing to show you that I'm here for you. I'm there for you. You're the one for me. Um, but every time you ask him to do something, it's like, nah, 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 nah. You're going to be frustrated and miserable. All right, all right. 100%. Hi, Claudia. Yeah, so um, <laughs> uh, so first, I, I, I want to say I do agree with all the gentlemen, man. You know, everybody made great valid points, right? Um, and like Joe said, it's very true. Like, there's a difference between compromise and sacrifice. So everybody makes sacrifices, I believe, in relationships, you know, depending on the situation. You know, you might meet somebody that you fell head over heels for, right, in love with, right? And you guys might live in two different states, Somebody in that situation is going to sacrifice by making that move to, mm -hmm. you know, for the success, like you said, of the relationship, right? To be happy. But by me compromising my happiness, I feel like that's more of a fantasy to me than reality. Because for me, it doesn't matter how financially blessed we are, you know, how big our house is, you know, how many cars we were able to create out of this success, I'm still unhappy. So if I'm still unhappy, then my relationship isn't successful. You know what I mean? So for one, I can't compromise my happiness. You know what I mean? But definitely I understand that people do make sacrifices. You know what I mean? You might have a, a partner who, um, you know, has a, a pre-existing condition where they can't eat certain things anymore. And you might say, you know what, baby, you can't eat it no more. I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm not gonna eat it no more either. You're sacrificing, right? Even though you love it, you're sacrificing. But at the end of the day, your happiness that's like being in a relationship, man, and being miserable. That's like being with somebody who you, 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 you're not feeling your full self because there's a void missing. There's a hole within you that you know you're, you're missing, but you're still just trying to either settle, you know, or, or, or you're just willing to just deal with it for the sake of your situation. And that you shouldn't do. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, life is about being happy. And one thing about it, I don't care how great this looks on social media, how we look to other people, I'm not leaving this earth being unhappy. That's the last thing I want to do is leave this earth because we've been arguing every day. We fussing, we bumping heads. Oh, I'm depressed in my situation. So you have to find it within yourself to say, where does my happiness lie? And wherever that is, if you, if your partner can agree with that or understand that, then that's a, that's a different conversation, man. Now you really got to decide what you really want to do. Reach. Yeah, Claudia, sometimes you got to bet on yourself. You have to. 
Holla at the announcers. Mr. Holla. Yourself, it works every time. Holla, what you say? Sacrifice over what? What's it? Sacrifice over what? Come yeah, on. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, I like that. But, you know, another thing that I learned, too, is we have to be careful that we're compromising for people's insecurities. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times it could be them just being small or, mm -hmm. as they would say in Jamaica, bad mind mm -hmm. or so a whole bunch of other stuff. And we, we cater to that when we really shouldn't. We shouldn't be playing small and we shouldn't be compromising for their insecurity so that's another avenue of it that you want to definitely make sure to consider too yeah that is key man good question. Good question, Claudia. Be happy. that was a good question great question oh, okay. good question slim but remember All always right. the relationship is always growing if you're not finding any growth in it if you're not doing new things to uplift you guys man it, it's not worth it in my opinion, big time. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You drive safe. Thanks yeah. for joining, Claudia. No problem. Bye, Alicia. See you soon. Talk to you soon. All right. You're not going to find any growth in it if you're not doing new things. All right. So next up, we have Sophia joining us. Um, Sophia, welcome. Hello. Thank you, guys. Can you, can you um, so turn your volume down on your device? No problem. Hold on a second, guys. Hi, See you soon. Talk to you soon. Okay. Is that yeah, better? There's, yeah, there was just a feed. So, how are you? I'm doing good. How's everyone tonight? Great. Hi, Sophia. How are you doing? So, I have two questions. One is more personal and the other is more political. So um, I will ask the first one. So I know of a gentleman who is for, uh, to keep it short, he's amazing. Um, in talking to him, I did find out that his last serious relationship was in high school. Um, he dated someone for the four years that he was in high school, they were engaged. She ended up um, failing, and since he has not been in a serious relationship, in fact, he's practically not dated since. Um, and so I was wondering, from a guy's standpoint, would that be considered a red flag? No. Oh, no, that's not a red flag. Not a red flag? Not a red flag. Really? Oh, no. High, high school, wait. Can you give a ballpark of his current age? He's right. in his early to mid thirties. That's no. not a red. So, no, no. Check, check it out. Let me, check let it me out. say this. So, oh, go ahead, Julian. Uh, because the reason why I said that's not a red flag because obviously he. Remember, we go through stages as men, right? In his beginning stages to un identify his love, obviously it didn't work out for him. So now this whole thing, this whole years now, what he was doing is understanding himself. And I think that's the most important thing you need to do. You don't have to be in a relationship. You got to understand who you are. You got to grow within who you at, um, who you like to be and become that man. And when you're ready, right, then you can step in that arena again. I don't think that's ever going to be a red flag, similar to if it was a woman would have done it. Because the reason why I say that is you get a chance to know who you who you are and know, understand who you actually are um, becoming at the same time. So then you go step in the arena and say, you know what, I'm ready for that. Because he probably he probably didn't care for that. He probably had some you know, one-night stand stuff like that because men do that, right? Especially if he has some itch in his scratch. But other than that, you have to be in a relationship um, in order to feel stable and or um, mark as a good catch, really. So really, he's grown. I don't think that's a red flag. Yeah, there's no timetable on true love. You got to understand that some some people really protect themselves until they find that person because they're serious about what a relationship consists of. And he's probably serious about what he wants to want in a woman and what he wants to see as a future. And therefore, he's waiting this long for Mrs. Wright to come come by. And that could be you. So I wouldn't I wouldn't look at it as a red flag because then you'll start telling yourself negative things where he's probably saying, man, I love her vibe. I love everything about her. Maybe she's the one that I'm going to get into that long-term relationship or try that long-term relationship with after so many years. Yeah, I really I really wish I could 
turn back the hands of time and go back, you know, um, because I was always found myself in long-term relationships, but I never gave myself an opportunity to learn myself, you know, mm -hmm. learn life, enjoy life, go wild. So what happened is there was a lot of mistakes made within my relationship, these long-term situations, right? Because I just never gave myself an opportunity to enjoy me. And I think as young adolescents, we need that. They need that, right? Go through it, make the mistakes, enjoy life, YOLO as they like to say. And then when you get tired, because there is going to come a time when we all get tired of it. We all want to settle down. We all want to say, okay, I've done it all. I've sown my world oats. You know, I've lived life to the fullest. What's next? That At that point, you know you have somebody that it really is going to take it serious. And you guys can really build together. You know, but like 2021 in long-term relationships, that's only a recipe for disaster. Trust me, I'm speaking off the experience. <laughs> and I did it because I've always been a serial relationship type of guy. But at the end of the day, you need that time, especially men. We need that time, man, to really figure out who we are, man. So I say there's nothing wrong with that. He probably is really ready right now. So, Phil, let me ask you, um, was he in any type of relationship? No. No? no. So I, and I agree with what the panel just said. Uh, I, I've told my daughter and son, why don't you guys wait till, wait, wait till you're about 30 or 28? Why don't you guys just travel, get to know people? Don't tie yourself down, pursue your goals. Because the one thing that I think throws a lot of people off track of what they're, um, what they're acquiring to be is another person. So now you're trying to get to know, you know, you're trying to do with another person. So now let me ask you, and not trying to get into your business, but is he, is he established? Not established, but do you see that he's progressed or he's, um, uh, a mature or acquire some things like if he's still living in his mama's basement, that that might be some things you might need to consider. But is he on? Is he on his own two feet? Is he taking care of business? No, he's on his own two feet. Um, he's established in his career. Um, he's a very godly man, and so he spends majority of his time working for or supporting the church that he serves. Okay. So um, I don't. I don't question him in that aspect. It just um, like I'm I'm divorced myself, and so I know the hurts that can come from a relationship and needing some time away to reestablish yourself, get to know yourself, get back on your own two feet. Because I've done it. Um, sure. It's just the length of time <laughs> of which I've done it was significantly shorter, and it made me. It made me question, especially for um, a, a male, especially a young male, to have spent that much of his time, not only, I could understand if it wasn't a serious relationship, but he talked to a couple of people, hung out with a couple of people, but from his description, there was nothing. There was really serious, I'm gonna marry her, she's the one, she bailed, zero. And so are you guys serious now? No, we just started, uh, we just, like, we just, just started, started okay. <laughs> yeah, we just started talking, we're okay. in that phase of getting to know each other, and we were just started diving into um, our past relationships and how we got here. Okay, well, I, I, like, again, I'm a, and I'm going to cut it short, you're in a, a position of someone with experience and uh, meeting someone who's not, to not mold him, but to really be able to get to know this person knowing that he's not bringing on extra baggage. Mm -hmm. The person I would be afraid of is the person you meet that's been in a lot of relationships, a lot of short end. Now that's the person might be a red flag. This person is coming with no baggage clean. You might be sitting in the driver's seat, you know what I'm saying? Or, <laughs> or, or you know, you're, you're sitting in a good spot. So yeah, that, I, I agree with the fellas. That's not a red flag. Hell, I, I almost say it's a light green. Okay. <laughs> Not a light green. I can't say dark green, but yeah, I'll say it's a green. So yeah, don't don't let that be a, a issue or a hindrance. Thank you, thank you all. Um, that so smile we... looks like hope, Sophia. It is. <laughs> it is. Nice. I'm a little worried, but uh, I'm feeling a, a bit more confident about the situation. Um, so my second question is a debate. Um, I saw between um, some of my sorors um, online 
And so on the news, there's been a series of, of Caucasian women who've been masquerading as light-skinned Black women who have come out to say that they are, they're white. And, um, and they want to no longer perpetrate as a, being a light-skinned Black woman. And so the debate became, why is it that there are so many white women who feel comfortable masquerading as light-skinned Black women? And one of the things that was thrown out is because that they are average in their own arena, but when they are a light-skinned Black woman, they become desirable. They become pick of the you know top cream of the crop. They become something that is being idolized and it is being searched after. And so they become more, which is why they would take on what would be a heavy role. Like being a Black woman is a heavy role. But for them, it is nicer than what they had, which is why they go that route. And a lot of the argument was that a lot of this you know, light-skinned Black women being put on a pedestal is being perpetrated from a Black male point of view. And so I wanted to kind of get your take on this argument. Do you feel as if as Black men, we are putting light-skinned Black women on such a pedestal that even white women would want to perpetrate and become them? Ooh, Sophia. I told you it was heavy, I'm sorry. That That's a loaded question on that one, Sophia. And I'm, I'm a, I'm gonna be short and brief on this one. If you think about through our whole, uh, our whole experience have always been, uh, as, for, as far as advertisements, modeling, it's always been the long flowing, light skinned woman that was always thrust in front of, you know, that was the only one they paraded around, even mm -hmm. for, uh, for black men. So it's not, I don't think it's so much as, I, I, I would love to know what is the percentage of men who go out to women because they're light skinned? I, I, I truly think that's a perception. And because it's advertised, and just like an NBA, uh, people uh, always say uh, NBA players marry all these white, uh, white women. I would love to know what is the percentage of black men in the NBA that does have a white wife compared to a black wife? Because the only ones you normally see is the white wife, right? So I can't say that. Uh, you know, that the light-skinned woman is, you know, these white women who want to become light-skinned black women. I, I I wonder how long they do that before reality sets in and they want to go back to the other side of the track because it's not easy for a black woman, no matter what shade. But, uh, yeah, so they do, yeah, so there is a, a I guess, a uh, I don't know, uh, somewhat of a desire, but I, I, I couldn't say why they would do it, but from the black male's perspective, I don't. I think it's more of a perception than it is a reality of us going after the light-skinned woman. But my brothers, mm. and you say, Mark, you say that that's due a lot to media, media having a lot of light skin. Man. Okay. Yeah, because even look at uh, if you even look at uh, uh, like Jet Magazine back in the day, and I'm I'm throwing my age at it, right? Jet Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, Google it. No, yeah. The Jet Beauty of the Week a lot of times. Yeah, they, they, a lot of times they have the light-skinned woman on there. And that's, yeah. and that's our magazine. So a lot of times those are the ones that's being advertised and on the flag. But I, I, think, it's, I think it's more perception than it is reality. I really do. Yeah. Um, let me go to Joe. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Mark say. Um, we've had this debate a couple of times as well. Um, I think it, it is a perception. Um, I love I love my black women. Um, I love them, y'all complexion, even a little darker. So for someone to come in and want to uh, perpetrate a, a black woman because they feel they're light enough, that's a hard task. And that's why I feel it's a perception is um, black women bring so much to the table, so much culture, so much soul, so much love that I don't think it could be duplicated. So yeah, they might could portray it, but they cannot be a black woman. So that's why I don't work out for them. And I would love to see the numbers as well to see like how many black wives there are compared to white wives. Because we see LeBron, he's still with his high school sweetheart, but she doesn't get talked about a lot because somebody else may have a white wife and that image is better for whatever they're trying to sell. But I think I think that that's, that's like a, a perception. I, I really think that black men love their black women. Um, but they may find a few that say, "Oh, there we go. We got a, a white a white girl with a, with a black man." 
Junior? Yeah, this is a debate that always happens between, I guess, men. Um, but this is something new to me about this white and white women trying to be light-skinned black women. That just showed you how amazing black people are that you want to portray yourself into a different race because you want to either have the men have the perks have whatever it is yeah honestly is is really i can't really say that because um it doesn't matter for the skin color for me right as long as you're black and down to the core that's fine uh, i had this argument with my wife all the time she said well, you know you like dark skinned women i said i just i just like my black women that it doesn't matter what what level of shade you are as long as you true black to me and we have some similarities and you know my struggles we could actually grow together and fight this um this whole statistic around me that's fine but um this i think it's never going to change you don't have this argument all the time while some some guys say white women are a little bit easier to deal with cuz they are weak men out there that don't know how to deal with a strong black sister or a strong woman at that point really so the argument is going to stand back for time just continue being a strong woman that comes with some great points and know how to love and carry you you still be straight but honestly as a preference really down to that so before i jump to charles sophia let me ask just for my clarification so these white women that are dressing as light-skinned Black women, they're doing it because they understand that light-skinned Black women get special treatment as well? Is that, like, they believe that to be the truth? So they it's do it? that they get more attention, they get, they are more desired, and they are liking the perks. There's one woman who became, um, I think, one of the head members of the NAACP perpetrating oh, yeah. this. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's one who became um, the professor of African American studies at a major university perpetrating being black. And so they are getting prestigious roles that black women should be getting. And they are in turn speaking for a community that they do not represent because there are perks in it for them. And so some of them are, um, there are procedures to darken, darken your skin. So some of them are going as far as to do that. Um, some are adding texture to their hair through, you know, products. Some are wow. just braiding the hair to make, you know, to give it some kink. And so um, they are speaking the lingual, wearing the clothing, and, and they're getting positions in Black communities, elevated positions, um, perpetrating as Black women. And so um, I just wondered where did they get the idea, like, where are they getting the idea that there is a perk from light-skinned women, that it was worth lying about who they are down to the core to put on an act? And some of these women put on this act for decades, for years upon years of their lives, that they lived this persona because there was a benefit to them in doing so. And so that just kind of sparked my interest of um, them being more desirable, them being more sought after, that was one of the, that was one of the perks. Wow, Charles? Charles, before you, before you say anything, Sophie, I just wanna ask you real quick before I forget. So you say there's been a, uh, in a surge of this going on? There's, there's been, been a um, There's been a couple since the Corona quarantine. Um, I believe there's been about three new women that have come out. Okay. that have um, outed themselves as being actually white. Okay. Mm. Charles? Well, Sophia, I'm going to start by saying I personally am team Black, Nubian, Egyptian goddess. You guys are made out of gold, honey, sh brown sugar, cinnamon. Mm. Like, who wouldn't want you guys? You should feel flattered, right? Because they are intimidated by you guys. Because it's not that they they feel threatened because they want what you have, what they want what you want, right? That they feel threatened in some ways. Um, and we've we've seen it, right? Not only this the surge in just the makeup and the hair, but look at the surge in plastic surgery that they're doing. Because it's a physical attribute that they also have to fit as well for them to feel like they can play that part. And they're going that far with trying to add on or enhance things in their physical to try to, you know, play that role. But no one can compare to you guys, you know, and even with those one-off situations, 
the, it'll it'll never be it'll never be enough. They can never be enough, and, it, and it'll they'll never be able to hold that lie for long, that position for long, because it's going to come out. You know, sometimes there could be one-off situation where there are companies that have certain quotas they have to meet with certain demographics or certain you know uh, racial backgrounds, whatever the case is, and maybe they feel like that's their only way to get in. Who knows? But at the end of the day, we are not that. And I can just speak for me, of course, but yeah, we're not campaigning for that's the way. That's what we look for. That's what we want. No, because we love our queens. We definitely love our queens, man. So y'all are winning still. And can, can I add one, one thing also onto that? You were saying they're, they're looking for benefits and perks. Now, for the young lady that was working as an African-American professor, was this at a black uh, university? No, it was at a, at a white university. Okay. So I'm thinking she probably didn't sit up in front of a board of black members. There's probably a board of white members that saw her. So for the one at the NCAA, and I forgot her name. Now this where uh, this where I say it comes back on us because she did what she had to do, getting her skin darkened, but she had to sit in front of a panel of black yeah. people who <laughs> then said, out of ba 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 ba, we gonna choose this very light skinned person. So again, it comes back on, you know, what are we looking for, right? So because mm. you you only because I'm thinking they only did that because they thought you know it was an opportunity for them to be rewarded, and then they was rewarded, but they was rewarded because we they sat in front of us at least one in WAC and they said, hey, we going with this one. Now it goes back to what were they looking for, and it uh, again it goes back to advertisement. I want somebody who's whose face, you know, like a, a real quick, um, Rosa Parks. You know the story about Rosa Parks on the bus and who they, what reason why they chose her over a darker skin lady, because Rosa Parks wasn't the first person who didn't uh, move for, on the bus. It was a darker skin lady. I can't remember her name, but they wanted Rosa Parks, one, because she was a teacher. She was very, she was a very, uh, 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 words, uh, articulate. Mm-hmm. And she was a light skinned, pretty woman. So, again, it goes back to, you know, we, we sometimes are our worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I have That's... to agree with you. I know I, I just saw a, um, a study that they were doing um, where they were looking at celebrities, Black female celebrities that are um, in their early 30s and late 20s. And they were looking to see how many of them are actually light skin versus dark skin, and they could not name one A-list celebrity that was of dark skin um, that was within that age group, and that all we had were mixed race or lighter skinned women representing within that age group. So I can see if that's all that people are seeing, and that's what we're, is being put out there as what's beautiful, what's the standard, then I can see why um, people are being led astray. Because even Will sometimes say, what's the young lady who played on Black Panther? The, uh, the girlfriend. <laughs> and they'll say, I forgot her name, but they'll say stuff like, uh, she is so beautiful to be so dark skinned. Mm-hmm. Like, where did that Pretty come? for a black girl. Yeah, yeah, you are pretty to be a black girl. You know, you are so pretty to be so dark. Like, what? What? Mm-hmm. So again, but that's coming from us. So thanks, thanks for the question. Ray? What about Issa? What about Issa Rae? What about Gabrielle Union? What about these people? So they are looking at women under 30 for under 30. the younger generation to see who we have. And I think that majority of the women that that, that, that were A-list celebrities. And so mm. um, there were very few to choose from. And I think the highest grossing one was um, Zendaya. Yeah. She's, um, yeah. And she's mixed. Yeah. yeah, she's mixed. Yeah. That's a great point that she brought up. Um, well, a wow. lot of that plays, sorry, a lot of that plays into the times that we're in also. It's, it's what they're doing to get in the spotlight. We have a lot of YouTube, a lot of um, social media and those things that are playing. They're more they're more involved in those things to where maybe the um, the young lady from uh, Black Panther, like Mark was saying, she's not maybe not on social media as much to promote herself. Or like Kiki Palmer, you know, Kiki Palmer is not out there as much like she used to be. And I know she's, she's an A-lister. But they won't consider her that because she's not in that light. Maybe doesn't have a lot of streams. Maybe doesn't have a TikTok channel. 
maybe is not doing something to where the camera is always in her face. Yeah, but a lot of the white ones don't have to do a lot of that extra stuff either. And they're by default a, a list still, and you know their names still. You get what I'm saying? Like, I guess the point is we shouldn't have to overdo it to be included. Yeah. That's a good, black but that's people, good black people, we're always, we always have to do double. We always know that no matter what we do in life, we're taught that we're going to have to do double in whatever we do. That's just, uh, that's American, that's American standards. You know, you may have someone that has an A minus, you have to have an A plus plus to be at the top of the class. And that's just, I don't know, I guess that's a, a stigma that we have with us. Sophia, what's your thoughts? Did they answer your question? Yes, they did. So thank you so very much. Right, thank you so point. much for joining. Those were some really good I'm questions that you that had. Was, was very so different. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it, Sophia. Thank you so Ooh. much. And go get a man a hug and a kiss for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Real in that fish line, Sophia. You talking about Real the high school guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. the high school guy. Uh, he passed the test. I'm feeling a lot more confident about him, so I I will. I will definitely hold on to that one. Sophia, right, cool. Mister, you invite us to the wedding. Okay. Well. <laughs> oh, fellas, this was so much fun. I can't believe we are already like at an hour. This has been so much fun. To everybody tuning in, um, again, first and foremost, of course, we appreciate you guys' support. Like. This session and all sessions are dedicated to you guys because it's really the audience that brings to life our conversation. And it's so good to see them from time to time and get to ask whatever they wanted. So guys, let me throw it back to you all. What did you think about today's session? These were some thoughtful questions. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's very, very doing thoughtful. some homework. Mm -hmm. the ladies brought it. They definitely yeah. brought questions, man. Stumped us on a couple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> What you think, Junior? No, the, I mean, these questions was awesome. Hit it right at home, got us thinking, really got me re reflecting on some things. Um, honestly, I was ready to get some real answers, and I love that. Yeah, yeah. Joe? Yeah, very smooth. Um, yeah, very thoughtful questions, um, especially the last one, Sophia. Those questions, like, it, it took me back, like, man. But, yeah, this was a nice, a nice episode. Yeah. yeah, when you have questions that make you uh, want to do some research, man, and really, yeah. you know, look into some things, that's thought-provoking, and, and yeah. we appreciate those type of questions, because I definitely, after this, doing a little homework on some things, so. Yeah, and, and even beyond homework, just kind of challenging your own beliefs, right, with unlearning yeah. some things. Oh, okay, uh, then. Oh. You threw that in. You threw that in. I like that. I like the way you threw that in. Like no, but on a serious note, fellas, this was so much fun. You guys are always a pleasure to hang with. And uh, to everyone tuning in, if you found this to be valuable and you love the insight and the vulnerability shared by the fellas, we just ask that you share it with your people. You know, these are conversations that can really push the agenda and our narrative forward in a better light. So we thank you again for tuning in with us. We will see you in two weeks. Until then, be safe and take care. Go take heat. Care, guys. Uh, That's right. <laughs> no, I had to throw that out. <laughs> <laughs>